What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Curry, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetch. We take a look at a lot of really dope sneakers on this channel, and thanks to people like you guys, I've been able to get my hands on some really incredible sneakers and still be able to show them to you guys. You guys remember we took a look at the Trophy Room ones that one of the subscribers sent in. I really appreciate you for that. And today, another one of you guys sent me over probably one of the most special shoes that I have shown on this channel in quite some time. As a matter of fact, this sneaker is so special that I'm gonna wait to really go into the box until we take a look at the sneaker because I actually feel like we need to talk about the shoe first before we get into the packaging. It all comes together, just trust me on this one. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Nike Waffle One SE for the Whitaker Group. If you know, you know when it comes to this sneaker right here. This sneaker is possibly one of the most highly coveted and limited sneakers to drop of 2021 so far. Limited to only 500 pairs. This, what you're looking at right here, is the brand new Waffle One silhouette that Nike is coming out with. Now you're gonna see a lot of colors of these, but this inaugural colorway, this first one was a really special collaboration only done with the Whitaker Group, which is the company that owns all of James Whitner's brands like APB, Social Status, and Ama Meniere. Let's take a little deeper look at the shoe and then we'll talk about the inspiration and the history and the story behind the sneaker, which this one's got a really incredible one. Let's take a look. Starting with the upper of the shoe here, you guys will notice that the silhouette is very, very reminiscent of the Nike Waffle, one of the first sneakers that Nike ever came out with thanks to Bill Bowerman's famous waffle design. We'll get into that a little bit later. But this time, the sneaker has actually been revamped for 2021 with a few new design embellishments. Now, on this particular model, again, this is the Wicker Group Special Edition, so the materials might be a little more elevated from what you're going to see in subsequent models of the Waffle One. But on this one, you have a base layer of this really nice mesh here that goes all along the upper of the sneaker. Now underneath that, you'll also see that you have this really nice kind of coral colored material here weaving throughout the collar of the sneaker and going down into the tongue. Now above that layer of mesh, you have a really nice layer of suede, this really nice cream colored beige suede that goes down the eyelets of the sneaker, around the heel of the shoe, and around the toe box of the shoe as well. You also have this really nice black cracked leather swoosh on the lateral and medial side. Taking a top down, look at the shoe here. Of course, on the toe box, you see this see-through mesh toe box here with kind of that rust color right underneath there. You have the regular cream colored laces and the tongue is very interesting on these. It's set down just like that Nike waffle. Now with this particular pair, the special edition, you're also going to get two extra sets of these rust colored laces. I'll kind of explain what the meaning is behind that color in just a moment. Moving around to the back of the sneaker here on the heel, you'll notice that this kind of reminds me of the Nike Daybreak. If you guys remember those sneakers that kind of look like they had the big fins going out the back of the shoe here. The Waffle One is going to offer a similar aesthetic here. The wings don't jet out quite as far, but they're pretty much flush with the rest of the sneaker here. And this is a hard plastic material, just so you guys know. So it's very similar to the Daybreak, but just not quite as ostentatious. Now, the really cool thing that I did like about these fins here is you'll notice on the medial side of the sneaker on the heel here. It actually has a little bit of verbiage here that talks about Beaverton, Oregon, Waffle One established 1972, the year that the original Waffle came out, and NSW for Nike Sportswear. So the Waffle isn't necessarily a running shoe by definition, but you definitely could do that in it if you want to. But the new Waffle One is actually what's part of the lifestyle group, the lifestyle Nike Sportswear collection of sneakers. So you can wear this casually or you can wear this for performance if that's what you're into. On the midsole of the shoe, if you thought that this was making the shoe look aged, you're absolutely right. These are aged midsoles that all ties into the story of the sneaker we're gonna get into in just a moment. But the sneaker itself is made to look like an artifact from the Nike archives. On the outsole of the sneaker here, this outsole is a purely black outsole that mimics the waffle outsole on the original waffle sneaker. And on the heel, you have a slight blue hit with the Nike swoosh that says established 1972 once again. Now, before I get to the insole of the shoe, I think this is a pretty good time to actually talk about the inspiration behind the design of this sneaker and why this sneaker is so ridiculously special. Let's get into it. I don't know how much you guys know about Bill Bowerman, one of the original founders of Nike along with Phil Knight, but if you don't know much about Bill Bowerman, let me run down his resume with you 
really, really fast. Bill Bowerman was born in Portland, Oregon back in 1911. As a matter of fact, he was born right after his father, Jay Bowerman, had finished up his bid as the governor for the entire state of Oregon. Bill Bowerman loved sports as a young kid. He played multiple sports in his high school. He went to Medford High School, also in Oregon, and then he went on to play sports again at the University of Oregon. Now, after he left college, Bill Bowerman went over to the military, ended up fighting in World War II, ended up coming back to the United States and getting right back into sports once again, this time in more of a coaching capacity. And he landed back at the University of Oregon as their track coach, where he became a super legend. He won the University of Oregon four NCAA track titles and then also went on to coach 33 Olympians before coaching the actual Olympic team in 1972. I mean, the man even wrote a book on jogging. Jogging and running and track became Bill Bowerman's entire life. And his life was dedicated not just to the sport, but also to the innovation behind the sport to give athletes a better advantage. And where was his focus primarily? The shoes. Bill Bowerman was always trying to innovate the running shoe for it to be lighter and for it to be more functional. He started creating a lot of different types of sneakers using different skins. He used the skin of a carp, he used the skin of a rattlesnake, all these different animals to try to figure out what was light but also durable. Now, because these were track shoes that Bowerman was working on, he also tried to do a lot of things with removable spikes on the bottom of the shoes as well, making them out of different alloys, different metals, seeing what worked for the removable spikes on the bottom of the sneakers as well. That's why to this day on the waffle sneakers, you can still see the little holes right here on each of these squares. That represents where you could replace the spikes. Well, naturally, as Bill was experimenting with all these different ways to make the shoe better, he needed some guinea pigs in order to test the shoes out to see if they were really working And one of his guinea pigs that he was using was a runner on the University of Oregon track team that he was coaching at the time named Phil Knight. Now, if you're not familiar with who Phil Knight is, I hope that that rock that you've been under is quite comfortable. But as you may know, Phil Knight ended up becoming the other co-founder of Blue Ribbon Sports, which ended up becoming Nike along with Bill Bowerman. So Phil Knight is experimenting with all these shoes and soon enough, Phil Knight's teammates also start wanting the shoes as well. The shoes actually caught the attention of Otis Davis, who was one of Phil Knight's teammates, who ended up actually winning an Olympic gold medal, the first one in a pair of shoes that Bill Bowerman had actually made. Naturally, that made him a little bit popular, but after Phil Knight graduated, he went on to try to get into the business world, into his own endeavors, and try to marry the world of track and field together with the world of business by actually negotiating a deal to get distribution rights to the Onitsuka Tiger collection over in America. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Tigers, that's understandable because that's kind of an old brand, but actually the Tiger brand ended up morphing into what we now know as ASICs. So put some respect on ASICs name next time you try to clown somebody that's wearing a pair of those because if it wasn't for ASICs, there would be no Nike. But I digress. So when Phil Knight got the ability to distribute the Tiger shoes in the United States, naturally he went back to his old track coach to see if he would be interested. And instead of being interested, Bill Bowerman actually said, why don't you actually cut your old coach in on the business and we actually do this thing together. And that's exactly what they did. They went into business together and they started a company that was known as Blue Ribbon Sports. Originally, Blue Ribbon Sports was nothing more than a distributor for the Tiger shoes. And Phil Knight would take those sneakers from track meet to track meet, event to event, literally selling them out of the trunk of his car. He drove a green Plymouth and he took that green Plymouth everywhere to try to sell these shoes out of his car. While it might sound kind of crazy, they ended up making up to a million dollars by 1970. Even though that might sound like business was booming, which it was, unfortunately, the relationship with the company that they were distributing with, Tiger, that relationship wasn't going too well. So they ended up thinking to themselves and saying, you know what we need to do? We need to make our own shoes so that we can keep all the money. Now, Bill Bowerman had made the Cortez, but at the end of the day, that really wasn't their claim to fame. He also came out with a soccer cleat that was in production once they started up the company and ended up going into business for themselves to make their own shoes and that soccer cleat was named the Nike. For those who know, Nike is actually the goddess of victory in Greek mythology. But the shoes really weren't taking off. The company wasn't really taking off like they wanted it to. But at the same time, even though it seemed like a problem, it was a bit of a godsend, the University of Oregon was redoing their entire track and they were doing it with this new urethane material that actually was making it very difficult for all of the track runners to run on using the existing shoes that they had. So because he was a kind of guy that loved innovation so much, Bill Bowerman set out to create his own version of the shoe that could run both on that new urethane
third thing track and could run on multiple surfaces as well. According to the legend, Bill Bowerman used to use literally anything around the house that he could possibly find to gain inspiration for this shoe that he was trying to make. He used to use his wife's jewelry. He used to use anything that he could possibly get his hands on to try to figure out a way to make the perfect shoe. And the answer came to him of all places in the kitchen on a Sunday morning when him and his wife were supposed to be at church, but his wife decided to stay home and make them breakfast. And that breakfast was waffles. Legend has it that Bill's wife, Barbara, was finished making the waffles. And as Bill was enjoying his breakfast, he was looking at the waffle maker and started thinking to himself, you know what, those grooves in that waffle maker might actually give me just the right amount of lift if I put this design on the bottom of a shoe. And as he's thinking that, he's going to get his different little materials and mixing up his concoction that actually was making kind of the crude version of the original outsole on the original waffle. He pours it all into this waffle iron and because he's so excited about what he might have on his hands, actually forgets to put anything non-stick inside of the waffle iron and the waffle iron will not open. So he has to ditch the original waffle iron, go get new waffle irons, come back home and try it again. But it worked. The concoction and the idea actually worked wonders. And he came back to actually design the first iteration of a crude outsole that was known as the waffle sole. Thus, the waffle was born. Now the legend goes on to say that years and years later, that waffle iron, the original one that wouldn't open up, it actually was found buried around the backyard of the old Bowerman house that his son ended up living in. His son actually ended up giving the waffle iron along with some old waffle prototypes and some other stuff that was just buried in the backyard. He ended up giving it to Nike in exchange for a really nice donation to the University of Oregon. So now that original waffle iron is in Prefontaine Hall at the Nike World Headquarters. I mean, what a story. So Kari, what in the world does that have to do with the shoe that you have in your hand? I'm so glad that you asked that question. Remember what I told you guys that we would take a look at the packaging a little bit later on in the video. Now's the time that we're gonna take a look at that packaging. So if you guys actually recognize this box, this was actually the first box that Nike used to make their first shoes in. You have the classic original Nike logo here with the Nike print here. And then of course, as Nike started to grow as a company, they had little check marks for where they were distributing their sneakers out to on the very beginnings of the very, very old boxes. Now we've seen this box before. If you guys sound off down in the comments, I wanna know if you guys know what box you've seen before. I'll give you a hint. The box was blue the last time that we saw it. So you get this really old school box here. It's very, very dope. But inside of the box, you get this really interesting paper here. Now this paper is actually made to look like a comic strip. Now the concept of this sneaker, of the story behind it, and of the execution of it was birthed by none other than the OG designer, Frank Cook. Now if you guys remember, we talked about Frank Cook because he was the mind that was behind the Bubba Chuck Reebok question mid a little while ago. He also has his hands on some other incredible projects that are coming out soon. He's doing something with Rockstar Energy. And he's also doing a project, I believe, with Nice Kicks. So if you'll notice on the paper here, it actually is a comic strip that reimagines a little different version of how the waffle sneaker was born. Now, this was actually drawn by an illustrator that goes by Pell NYC on Instagram. Very, very talented. Look them up if you can. Now, just so you guys know, this is how it goes. It's one, two, three, and four, and it's just repeated multiple times that same four square comic strip. But as you can see here, it says on your mark and you got Bill Bowerman here kind of mixing up the batter. It says get set where it looks like he kind of dropped the batter, slipped on something and actually slipped out of his shoe and they're both headed to the waffle iron. And then it says go where the mix actually is right underneath the shoe here. And it actually ends up creating the outsole, which is the new waffle outsole. It's a fun way to kind of reimagine that old story of legend from the Nike archives. And I love it. Now, getting back to the sneaker and the theming of the sneaker here. This sneaker, like I mentioned, is made to look like an ancient artifact, something that perhaps was also dug up from the backyard of Bill Bowerman, but updated for 2021 for the brand new Waffle One silhouette with the added embellishments, with the wings on the back and the upgraded materials. Nike has been doing an excellent job these days of blending the past 
and the future of their new models that they've been coming out with lately. They've been doing it with a lot of different sneakers. They actually did it recently with the Fragment Jordan 3. If you guys remember, that paid homage to the Orca Pack from back in the day, merging that old and that new together. And now with the new Waffle 1, Nike is doing it once again. And they started out with the iteration of this Waffle 1 Special Edition with Social Status. So the only way that you can get your hands on this sneaker was through an exclusive raffle through Social Status. But that raffle ended up getting extended after James Whitner and Social Status ended up adding a donation option to help the people that were displaced down in the winter storms that were happening a little while ago down in Texas. So if you wanted to donate or if you just want to enter in the raffle, that was the only way that you were going to be able to get your hands on this shoe. And if you want to talk limited, this sneaker is very limited. This sneaker is number 470 out of only 500 pairs made. For the record, I also like the insole of the sneaker as well because the insole actually is the same thing as the comic strip that's on the packaging paper of the shoe as well. But as I mentioned, the shoe is made to look like an artifact that was dug up in the backyard with the aged soles, the shoelaces that look like rust, and the colors of the sneaker that actually make it look like that rusted old waffle iron that was dug up in Bill Bowerman's backyard. Incredible job on this. Really love the execution. This is what I love the most about sneakers. When they tell an incredible story that reaches all the way back, this sneaker in particular reaches all the way back to the very beginnings of Nike, even back when it was Blue Ribbon Sports paying homage to the original founder in the original shoe, redone and revamped for 2021 with some incredible storytelling. And yes, this sneaker was very, very, very difficult. I don't even own this pair. This pair, again, was sent to me by one of you guys, one of the subscribers, and I appreciate you for that. But hopefully, I'd like to get my hands on a pair one day just because they tell such an incredible story. I believe that the Whitaker Group and Social Status ended up grossing a total of around 76 thousand dollars in donations that got sent down to Texas to help those people out. So if you're one of the people that donated, kudos to you. I'm one of those people as well. I definitely donated to the cause. Even if it meant that I didn't end up winning the raffle, that's fine. But guys, these here, these are a home run. These are a really special sneaker. Definitely on the short list for top sneakers of 2021. I love the storytelling. I love the materials. I love the execution. And I'm really, really excited to see what they come up next for the Waffle One. I know there's a lot of colorways that are playing coming up soon in the spring. I saw a triple black colorway. I saw a lot of different colorways as well. And to me, I don't know, it's just a really nice mix of kind of like gives me that Sakai vibe slash daybreak vibe here. And I don't know, I, I like them. And I guess that's pretty much all that I got to say about these guys. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the Nike Waffle One Special Edition for the Whitaker Group. Were you guys really interested in these? Did you try to get into the raffle to get yourself a pair of these? Are you guys going to go to StockX and pay the $1,800 to $2,000 that these sneakers are being asked for right now? Or are you going to go ahead and like me, take your L in peace and try to move on with life for the time being? Sound off. Let me know. Of course, write down in the comments. Make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you I got a lot more heat on the way. Oh, before I get up out of here, I want to give a big shout out to my guy, Johnny. That's been my guy for a long time. And he is the owner of the brand Mang that you guys are looking at on my t-shirt. I love this shirt. He just sent it over to me. My brother, I appreciate you for that. If you guys don't know what Mang means in Chinese, it actually means life. And this shirt actually has a double entendre because M-E-N-G for his brand means motivating every new generation. So it's paying homage, not just to his culture, the Chinese culture, but also motivating all the new generations of entrepreneurs and people that just want to get up and make something shake for themselves, you can do it. So Johnny, thank you very much for this shirt, man. I appreciate that. You guys have the address down there. If any of y'all would like to send me a shirt or something to rock on the channel, shoot it over to me. Let me know it's on the way and I'll be happy to rock it on the channel to support you guys. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sticker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Nike Waffle One Special Edition for the Whitaker Group. And until next time, I'm out.